गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल एम क्यू आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी और न्यूक्लियर क्वार्टन रसोन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वी ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट एन एम आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी एन एम आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज फाउंड इन द रेडियो फ्रिक्वेंसी रीजन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन सिमिलर टू दैट एन क्यू आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज ऑल्सो फाउंड इन द रेडियो फ्रिक्वेंसी रीजन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन ओके But unlike an MR, NQR transitions of the nucleus can be detected in the absence of magnetic field, and for this reason, NQR spectroscopy is referred to as zero field NMR. Okay. In NMR, it deals with the coupling between the electromagnetic radiations and the set of energy levels. But in case of NQR, it deals with nuclear energy levels. Therefore, this is an extension of NMR spectroscopy. an nqr spectroscopy is used to study the electronic environment around a quasar polar nucleus then what do you mean by a quasar polar nucleus quasar polar nucleus means oh, for it while well, consider a pole it is an the charge accumulated area is called a pole come to the concept of the dipole the two poles are two charges that is uh, separated by a distance called a dipole then comes to quasar pole that is four poles two plus charges and two minus charges as a result of this the spherical nature should be uh, depart there is a departure from the spherical nature okay. or lack of spherical nature in case of quasar polar nucleus we already know the nucleus are not spherical always okay so that there arise some electrical quasar polar moment actually electrical quasar polar moment is a parameter to describe the electronic in charge distributions for a spherical nucleus the spin should be half or zero or we know that any nucleus with more than one unpaired nuclear particle will have a charge distributions that results this electrical quasar polar moment okay in case of nmr nuclei with a spin greater than or equal to half have a magnetic dipole moment so that their energies are split by a magnetic field But in the case of NQR, the nuclei with a spin greater than or equal to one, such as N14, Cl35, Cu63, have an electric quasar polar moment. We already said that electrical quasar polar moment is a parameter to describe the electronic charge distribution. The nuclear quasar polar moment is associated with non-spherical nuclear charge distributions. Okay. NQR is a direct observation for the interaction of the quasar polar moment with the electrical field gradient. What do you mean by an electrical field gradient? Electrical field gradient uh, is a rate of change of electric field. That is called electrical field gradient. Then how this gradient is created? We already studied about electrical quasar polar moment. This electrical quasar polar moment interacted with us. There is a strong interaction of electrical quasar polar moment with the electric field in the nucleus. As a result, the there is a gradient is arise in the nucleus gradient means change arise in the nucleus okay this electric field gradient and quasar polar moment nuclear quasar polar moment interacted to form a set of quantized energy levels and the nqr deals with the, the transitions between these quantized energy levels okay then we we always we always say about oh, the origin of the levels are electrical in nature then why don't we use magnetic component what happened to that magnetic magnetic component the interactions between the magnetic component of the radio frequency and magnetic field in the nucleus there is an interaction between the radio uh, magnetic component of the radio frequency and magnetic field in nucleus and this was induced by the presence of this uh, strong interaction between the electric quasar polar moment and the electric field as a result there is a gradient is arise in the nucleus and this induces the interaction between the magnetic component of radio frequency and magnetic field okay the this nucleus uh, there is a gradient arise in the nucleus and which is called electric field gradient already we say is about electric field gradient and this electric field gradient is rate of change of electric field in the uh, electronic environment and the important conditions of the nqr spectroscopy and you are another important condition is and you are observed in the solid samples in case of liquid solid sample like cl35 and 40 in case of liquid or gaseous 
the electric field gradient is zero due to the molecular motions then why should we select this n14 because due to the two reasons we select this n14 molecule because it has a large uh, nuclear quadrupole moment and also uh, the presence of bonding bonding means it consists of lone pairs and also bond pairs and uh, there is a p character and that this p character is sufficient for the electric field gradient therefore it has a high electric field gradient and also nuclear uh, quadrupole moment these two are large in case of n14 molecule the principle behind nqr spectroscopy when a nucleus with an electric quadrupole is surrounded by an inhomogeneous electric field the quadrupole nucleus will interact with the electric field gradient and give rise to a set of quantized energy levels so when you have a nucleus with electric quadrupole and electric field gradient we know that this electric field gradient and electric quadrupole arises from the non uniform distribution of positive charge so when you have a nucleus with this electric quadrupole and electric field gradient they will interact with each other and they will give rise to a set of quantized energy levels and the energies of these levels will be equal to e square q q into modulus of 3 m i square minus i into i plus 1 by 4 i into 2 i minus 1 where i is the nuclear spin quantum number m i is the magnetic quantum number and e square q q is the nuclear quadrupole coupling constant the allowed orientations are quantized and the nucleus has 2 i plus 1 orientation which are described by the nuclear magnetic quantum number m i where m has the values i i minus 1 etc to minus of i minus 1 comma minus i there is a slight mistake in the ppt uh, the m can take values i i minus 1 etc to minus of i minus 1 and minus i simply 1 to simply uh, plus i to minus i so um, this point states that if you have a nucleus with i is equal to for example i is equal to 1 by 2 so you will have uh, 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 you will have two orientations okay which are described by the nuclear magnetic quantum number mi where m can take values from i plus i to minus i therefore you will have m value plus 1 by 2 comma minus 1 by 2 that is m is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 and you will have two orientations okay then for example for a nucleus with a uh, spin i is equal to 3 by 2 uh, m i can take values 3 by 2 1 by 2 minus i uh, 1 by 2 and uh, minus 3 by 2 it is given that for i is equal to 3 by 2 allow only single transition of frequency it means um, there are i minus 1 by 2 transition frequencies for half integral spins and i for integral spin this point is not given in the ppt uh, so you have to note down that there are i minus 1 by 2 transition frequencies for half integral spin and i for integral spin that means if you have a half integral spin for example here it is given that i is equal to 3 by 2 so it is a half integral spin and you will have i minus 1 by 2 transition frequency that is 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2 you will have 1 only one transition frequency therefore it is given that for i is equal to 3 by 2 allow only a uh, single transition of frequency okay then you have uh, m i m i can take values 3 by 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and 3 by 2 okay then for m i is equal to 3 by 2 gives e 3 by 2 is equal to plus e square q q by 4 that is we are substituting the value of m in the energy expression and you will get the energy value okay for m i is equal to minus 3 by 2 uh, you will have the energy plus e square q q by 4 so we can see that for m i is equal to uh, plus 3 by 2 and minus 3 by 2 you will have the same energy that means the energy levels are degenerate okay similarly for m i is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 they are also the same energy levels so um, same energy therefore these energy levels are degenerate okay so yeah it means that m for m i is equal to plus or minus 3 by 2 give doubly degenerate set of quadrupole energy state and similarly the state from uh, m i is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 will be doubly degenerate okay you can see in that diagram 
that the energy levels are splitted into two for m i is equal to 1 by 2 and m i is equal to 3 by 2 and you can see there are uh, two uh, degenerate levels for m is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 and similarly for m i is equal to plus or minus 3 by 2 there are also two uh, degenerate energy there are two levels which are degenerate okay then the energy uh, difference or um, the transition energy delta E is given by E square QQ by 2. We know that delta E is equal to H nu. We know the equation. So, we are substituting H nu is equal to E square QQ by 2. So, we will have E square QQ is equal to 2 H nu. So, we can say that E square QQ is twice the frequency of NQR transition. Okay. Then, E square QQ is related to splitting of the quadrupole level and E square QQ by H is the nuclear quadrupole coupling constant. And the NQR frequencies of nuclei usually lie in the range 100 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz. Next, for a nuclear spin, I is equal to 5 by 2. Okay, for I is equal to 5 by 2, you will have the uh, M value from uh, 5 by 2, 3 by 2, 1 by 2, minus 1 by 2, minus 3 by 2 uh, and minus 5 by 2. So, you can simply write E is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2, plus or minus 3 by 2 and plus or minus 5 by 2. And the selection rule for these transitions is given by delta m is equal to plus or minus 1. So, uh, you can see in the diagram, um, the energy levels are splitted into 3 for plus or minus 1 by 2, plus or minus 3 by 2 and plus or minus 5 by 2. And there each one is doubly degenerate. Okay. Then the transition, you uh, you know that the transition delta m i is equal to plus or minus 1. It is a selection rule. Therefore, transitions are occurring only from plus 1 by 2 to uh, plus or minus 3 by 2 and from plus or minus 3 by 2 to plus or minus 5 by 2. Next for a nuclear spin i is equal to 1. For i is equal to 1, you will have the m values uh, 1, 0 and minus 1. Uh, there you know that uh, m is equal to plus 1 and minus 1. They can exist as doubly degenerate state whereas m is equal to 0 will exist as itself. Okay. So, you can see in that diagram clearly um, the energy levels are splitted into 2 for m is equal to plus or minus 1 and m is equal to 0 and for m is equal to plus or minus 1 it is a doubly degenerate orbital and m is equal to 0 is a uh, remains as itself. Okay. And in NMR the splitting energy splitting between energy levels are proportional to the applied magnetic field and transitions are usually studied by using a fixed frequency oscillator while varying the magnetic field. It means that in NMR, the splitting of energy levels, they are proportional to the applied magnetic field. And um, the transitions are usually studied by a fixed frequency oscillator. Frequ frequency oscillator is fixed there and we are varying the magnetic field. But in the case of uh, NQR spectroscopy, a variable frequency detected detection system is used. In NQR, as electric field gradient uh, is a fixed property of the solid, a variable frequency detection system must be used. Okay, these are all about the principle of uh, NQR spectroscopy. Application of NQR spectroscopy 1. NQR spectroscopy can be applied to study point group symmetry. NQR frequency can give information regarding the location of principal axis of symmetry. 2. NQR spectroscopy used to study phase transition. NQR frequency for a crystalline solid depends on the crystal structure if a crystal exists in different conformation at two different temperature. Then it is possible to find the temperature at which the crystal changes from one form to another form from the NQR data. Example, phosphonitrile chloride exists in two form, K form and T form. K form has got two lines in NQR spectrum, while T form has got four lines in NQR spectrum. On heating K form, two line spectrum changes to four lines at 63 degrees Celsius. Thus, this compound has transition temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. 3. Detection of hidden explosive. 
when the low intensity of signals is applied to the explosive. The energy state of nuclei present in explosive can be altered after the radio frequency field removed the nuclei can be returned to their original state releasing energy and producing a characteristic ratio signals. The signal can be detected using radio receiver and can be measured for the analysis of compound present. 4. Comparison of nuclear quadrupole coupling constant in the atomic and molecular state for the sum nuclei give the information about the extent of hybridization and ionic character. 5. Structure of group 3 halides can be established using NQR spectra. NQR spectra can also be used to study charge transfer spectra.